What's going on everybody, Jem Mint here. Today I'm gonna to tell you how I got started in statue collecting. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video, and we're gonna give away a Spider-Man Premium Format statue once we hit our next subscriber milestone of 125,000. Stay tuned until the end of the video and I'll give you more details on that. So I kinda of wanted to make a video talking about how I got into this hobby, how I started collecting statues, and what kind of led up into this hobby of mine. So I had already been back into the comics for a few years now I was getting single issues I was getting graded comics I was getting key issues and I started to look around in hobby shops for other things to accentuate my collection so I started picking up Marvel selects these were action figures that had pretty decent sized figures for characters like Hulk or Abomination or Thing so I really liked those larger characters and I would display them next to my CGC books so I have like a Fantastic Four number one here, and I had the thing from Marvel Selects. Uh, I would also pick up little bank busts. Uh, here goes a Spider-Man one that I would display next to my Amazing Fantasy 15. And I did a video on how I was able to obtain the Amazing Fantasy 15. You could check that out here on the top of the video. But as you can see, I was collecting slabs. I was collecting the larger sized Marvel Selects. I had the Thanos with Death. I had the Red Hulk. And then like how my addictive personality can be, I started picking up all of the Marvel Selects from characters that I liked. So then I had like Venom and Carnage. But I didn't really like how the smaller figures displayed. They looked a little gangly. They didn't have as much presence as those larger characters. Here you can see I have a setup with all the blue chip Marvel keys that I owned at the time. And I wasn't really digging the Wolverine, even the Iron Man who's leaning forward about to fall right now. Basically any of those Marvel selects that had a base just didn't really do it for me. Uh, and like the Spider-Man bank bust, I would pick up some life-size head busts like the Harley Quinn and Deadpool and Thanos, which you guys still see me have some of those, but I would have that displayed with my key issues as well. I had seen statues before. My local comic shop was Past, Present, Future in West Palm Beach, uh, and they always had statues kind of really high up on their shelves. So you didn't really get a good look at them, or they would have some displayed behind the counter, uh, and they were always very expensive. I was always like, man, $600, $800. It felt a lot since I was collecting Marvel Selects, which were like 25 bucks. Now, I was putting a lot of money into key issues, but I, I just didn't really correlate the value with statues yet. So it just always seemed very expensive to me. But I did pick up my first quarter scale piece was the NECA Donatello from their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. I loved this figure so much and I kind of got it. I understood the quarter scale statue collecting when I picked up this NECA turtle. I ended up getting all four. I really enjoyed how they looked so realistic, just like the 90s movies. And then... I saw one of my friends on Instagram. Uh, I gave him his nickname, E. Rich. He's a key issue hoarder. He had like, I don't know, 15 Incredible Hulk 181s. I think he still has them. And he had a picture of an Incredible Hulk 181 with the Sideshow Wolverine vs. Hulk maquette. That's what made me say, you know what? That's going to be my first statue. I went on Sideshow, I think it was February of 2017, and it was shipping, but it was still in a pre-order status. So I was so nervous for some reason. It's like the first time I ever ordered something from their shop, uh, their online store, so I wasn't really familiar with it. I had bought you know, expensive key issues, but something about spending like $650 on this statue felt like I was a little apprehensive. It felt like, I don't know, like I was nervous. But anyway, I ended up pre-ordering it, and I had no idea when it was gonna ship, and I had the opposite of buyer's remorse. I was so amped up when I ordered this piece that I went to Past, Present, Future, and I bought two statues while I'm waiting for this Wolverine vs. Hulk to ship. I bought the J. Scott Campbell Spider-Man, which is a one-fifth scale, which I didn't know at the time, and the Hulk vs. Wolverine maquette is a one-fifth scale, and I bought the Apocalypse Premium Format and overpaid crazily for both of them. But I got him home, I unboxed him, and I was just into it. Like most of you guys who collect statues, you know how it is. When you first start collecting, that's when you go ham, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So I was still all antsy, waiting for this Wolverine vs. Hulk, that I ordered two more pieces from Sideshow. They were both shipping. It was their Wolverine and their Sabretooth Premium formats. They were both the regular editions. They weren't the exclusives. I didn't even know what exclusive was at the time. And I got them all at the same time. You can see here I had all three boxes, and this was uh, my old 
man cave in Florida before I moved to this house where I'm at now. And that's actually like the third iteration of that room. I should do a video of the evolution of my man caves. That'll actually be a pretty good video. So I had the Hulk versus Wolverine. I had the Wolverine and Sabretooth. I had the Apocalypse and I had the Spider-Man. And then I started doing what most of us do and go back to pick up older pieces. I picked up the Spider-Man premium format, the Green Goblin premium format. Then on eBay, I found out about XM Studios. I remember seeing their Thanos on eBay and I would text my friend Frank, who's always collecting on Instagram. I was like, dude, this Thanos is taller than the Apocalypse Premium format. The Apocalypse Premium format is huge. So I overpaid like crazy for the Thanos. I think I paid like $1,100. And then I just started going down the rabbit hole. I got the Dark Side Premium format. I got the XM Studios Ghost Rider. And that was the most money I had ever spent on a statue at that time. I spent $1,900, which I think is still pretty much fair market value for that piece. And you can see I have the first appearance of Ghost Rider displayed behind it. I ended up doing a local pickup to get this Daredevil. Uh, I was just on the hunt, man. I was collecting statues like crazy. I remember this Punisher statue came in right after I got off a live stream with Gabe from Gabe Infinity Watch. I think he changed his name now to uh, Gabe Loves 90s Comics on Instagram, and he's on Omni Bros on YouTube. And I remember we had just got off the live stream before I started my channel and the doorbell rang and it was this Punisher. And I remember texting him like, dang, I wish we would have stayed on a little bit longer. I could have did a live unboxing with you. But you can see I have this displayed with the um, Amazing Spider-Man 129. And I was still flipping books at this time. As you can see here in this picture, I got the first appearance of Wolverine, Thanos, uh, Ghost Rider, Punisher. And what I ended up doing was selling off my keys to buy more statues. You know how I always say, make the hobby fund itself. I ended up selling those and telling myself, hey, you know what? I'd rather put the money into something else right now. I wish I still had all those comics. All those books have <laughs> appreciated so crazy in value. But at the end of the day, I would never have gotten to statues. I would have never started this channel. So, you know, everything happened for a reason. Then I started getting a couple of disappointment pieces. Now, honestly, the XM Thanos was a little bit of a disappointment. I got the Batman premium format from Sideshow. I was disappointed. I liked their Dark Side premium format, but it did feel a little bit boring. And then I got the Iron Studios Superman vs. Doomsday and I was disappointed. And that's when I made a decision at that time. You know what, I don't really have the space or the money to collect everything. I'm gonna just stick with Marvel. So that's kind of why I only collected Marvel statues from there until maybe just about a year or so ago when I started finally having the space and the resources to get into those other lines. So that old man cave I mentioned, I was kind of running out of space. I had statues on top of all my calyx. I had already been in the omnibus hobby for a while and I got my first bestas. And I remember telling myself, don't set them up until you get the lighting because if you set them up, you're never gonna install the lighting. And sure enough, you can see, I ended up setting them up, no lighting, but it still looked good in there. Then comes the move. I got an opportunity to move out here to where I'm at now in Texas. It was a great opportunity for me. It was gonna enable me to buy my first house. So I took the job offer to come out here to West Texas and uh, I stayed in an apartment for the first four months. During that time, I was going statue crazy. I had so many statues coming to, to this apartment here. You can see the Sideshow uh, Carnage premium format, the Spider-Man Black, uh, Back in Black comic cat, the XM Venom, the Spider-Man comic cat, the OG. Uh, I was still flipping slabs. You can see I got the Avengers 1 7.0 with the Hulk comic cat. And this is that whole thing where I went 10 Hulks deep and bought every variant. I was going crazy in the apartment, buying up everything. And then I was ready to buy my first house. And the number one thing on the checklist was make sure it's got a room that I can use for my display and to start my YouTube channel. I actually wanted to start the channel back in Florida, but then the move opportunity happened, so I had to put a little four month pause on that. But here you can see this room right now, getting set up with the empty calyx, no books in there. Finally filled all the books up, put the statues that I had on top of them. Then I set up bestas and PAX units and set up my first display. So this was like, the first iteration of uh, my collection here in the first purge. I ended up purging a lot of these pieces, like the PCS pieces, all the Hulk statues, all the you know Mortal Kombat stuff. And I ended up going like for a big Street Fighter display. So I ended up putting that together. I ended up purging that collection because once I kind of fill something up, 
I get bored of looking at the same thing and I always want to get new stuff in. So I ended up selling all that stuff. I ended up putting an X-Men display together that I recently purged as well. There was a time where I was collecting life-size busts, which I really enjoyed. And actually I just got done watching Batman statues collector video on bus and I'm feeling life-size busts again. I ordered the Spider-Man uh, sideshow life-size bust that just went up for pre-order. But yeah, you can see that I was collecting those. You know, I had the big DC display going on. I ended up getting the Maji cases and I have those still set up downstairs with all the Berserk pieces. Uh, and, and my current little setup that I got going on, back to PCS with Transformers and Ninja Turtles, still got some quarter scale uh, sideshow pieces. But yeah, that's how I got started, man, with those Marvel Selects to pair them up with the CGC books then to the NECA, then to the statues. And I've always had kind of like a recycling aspect the way that I collect. Like I said, I like to fill up the room, but then I, I start to feel a little overcrowded. Then I like to purge a little bit, put it into something else, make the hobby fund itself and so on. So uh, I hope this was a fun video for you guys to kind of see where I started, where I'm at now and where I'm going to continue to go. I've recently downsized the collection a little bit, actually sold some books as well. And I'm, I might do a, a, a book sale video for you guys, uh, but I'm going to be building it back up again, bigger and better than ever every time that I do it. So uh, make sure that you guys stay tuned for the journey. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Leave a comment on this video to be entered into the giveaway for the Spider-Man Premium Format Exclusive. Once we hit 125,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. I appreciate you guys watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.